Sonic, the heart of your system. I'm Leo Wood for Kit Guru here with EKWB at CES. We've got a lot of stuff to see in this suite, uh, and I'm going to start almost at the bottom of their product range. This is the new EK Classic product line. He says reading the board to show he understands English. And it's just minimalist. Basically, everything's got 90 degree angles. They haven't chamfered anything. They've cut down the machining costs. Uh, they're saving you sort of uh, a percentage of the cost of manufacturing is what it is. But the products themselves are standard EK pump res. So that's obviously a DDC, uh, CPU block, GPU block. And here we have a PC built using those bits and pieces. Here we have the components themselves. And here we have the deliberately plain boxes to show those uh, plain components. Uh, so it is, you can build yourself a proper liquid cooled PC. It doesn't have to look utterly rubbish, but you don't have to spend an absolute fortune doing it. Uh, so it's kind of going in the opposite direction to their vector products. Uh, quite a neat innovation. Basically, the public said, uh, give us cheaper things, but don't make them worse. This is the answer. They don't look quite as swish, but yeah. they look pretty darn good. Moving along, we have a PC, and this is a PC that will be sold, not just a PC to demonstrate what the products look like. This is a PC that will be sold in Micro Center. Now, we know the fun and games with the Walmart PC that's been slated in America. This is a PC that will be available that looks like a proper PC, and apparently it's going to be really sensible money. Uh, the spec Core i7-9700K, the graphics card RTX 2080, but the price is only just over 2000 We've been told about 2200 Don't hold me to that. Uh, so it's a proper system. Uh, now you'll see uh, Lian Li uh, Der Bauer 011 case. Apparently, uh, Micro Center has actually spec'd this system themselves. So they selected the case, for example. They've got the components, they've got EKWB to then uh, connect all the bits and pieces up. Now we've got a distribution plate at the front. Uh, it's going to change very slightly such that you don't have to have quite such dramatic uh, tube bends. Uh, they've got some fittings we're going to get to so they'll be able to do this build with straight runs of tube, which is a very nifty thing indeed. So this system pretty much as you see it is going to be available in a store. Here we have the Valkyrie series of AIOs. Uh, now it actually looks huge because it's on a stand there. If I lift it off you will see it's actually a conventional size. Still in development. Uh, I think we saw it at Computex. Uh, it's a system. There's a load of components. Uh, the pump is on the block uh, but it's a proper thing. It's close to uh, manufacture but it's still under development so we're not going to see that just yet but nonetheless that actually looks at first glance like it's pretty much ready apart from the cables but the hardware looks uh, pretty good. Now the thing is that that is due to compete with AIOs from the mainstream so for example NZXT or NZXT if you must and Corsair and in terms of price we're told it is going to be in the, the correct ballpark so looking forward to seeing that uh, hopefully in the near future. Swinging around ROG Dominus motherboard so this is for the great big 28 core Xeon uh, we saw at Fantex they had uh, their own cooling on a board. Uh, this is the same board. It's got a velocity block and it's got the VRM cooling. Uh, so <laughs> this, this again raises the question, how many units could they conceivably sell if this is the most fabulous, successful product ever? If it sells 50, they'll have done blooming well because that 28-core Xeon is going to be the most niche of niche products. The block itself is actually based on a server 1U block, uh, which is uh, acetal in the server configuration. This is obviously metal, uh, so that is what it looks like. But uh, it's, a, it's a truly impressive thing to see, and it's, it's still quite funny to see that people are actually developing products for the ROG Dominus, and indeed for this 28-core uh, Xeon. 28-core Xeon that has not yet been launched. It was due in 2018, we're now in 2019, no sign of it yet. A few other bits and pieces. These are interesting. Uh, pressure testers, we like those. They're looking good. I mean, useful tools. Obviously, you want to check your loop is not going to go kaboom and then leak uh, when you uh, uh, put it all together um, and put in the coolant. So that's just to check your work. These look like they're sort of uh, section blocks or some such. They're not. They're for tube bending. So you take your uh, gizmo, screw it down, and then when you heat your tubing up, you basically form it, plonk it in. Uh, it's in this case, it's a 12 mil. 
it's called modulus, that's his name. Uh, so that's a 12 mil, that's a 14, and that's going to be a 16. They haven't yet finalised the design. They're going to make the grooves deeper so the tubes actually sit below the centre line to avoid getting a line on the moulding. But a uh, very neat idea, very straightforward. And we head over to a bit of RGB. Uh, so we've got combos. So we've got uh, acetal with the white ring. We've got uh, clear with the black ring. Uh, RGB all looking very nice and tidy. We've got the Threadripper block that's now on, I think, version 3. That's looking neat. We've got a Maximus uh, monoblock. Uh, there's one over there as well. Uh, it's just basically showing components. But we walk past those and we get to unions, which, depending on your point of view, are either the dullest thing on the planet or really blooming good. And these are good. These are variants in some instances on previous unions, and these are different. These are new. So the idea there is that these have all got swivels in them. Uh, above the knurling, so it's a multi-part assembly, uh, so you can easily add, for example, a drain, put that in the middle of your, uh, put that on your block, and you can take a drain off one side, easy peasy out, and have like a T, and then multiple fittings, and that can run you 40, 50 euros, pounds, dollars, easily, just to add a drain, that will do it in one fell swoop. That clearly is an angled fitting, obviously, and that is a 90 fitting. I mean, these are frankly obvious, and yet, innovative in one fell swoop, very good to see. When you add in the permutations of 90, T, 45, and then the straights and the different tube diameters, you end up with a whole bunch of different SKUs. You can see those are quite clearly retail products. It's quite clear they're building stock and they're coming up to make sure they have the entire suite of products ready to go. So those aren't going to be available today, but they're going to be available very soon. And when they go on sale, you're going to get every single product in the entire lineup, bang, simultaneously and obviously in different colours as well. Let us walk back around. Oh, before we back of this PC. Look at that distro plate. I just love that. That's absolutely great. That's the back of the blooming PC. And the front of this system built by JR23 is also pretty blooming good. Uh, you'll see there you've got a completely different manifold for uh, SLI. Uh, SLI is not dead, not in the we're prepared to spend any money to make it look absolutely gorgeous end of the market. But that, that is a sight to behold and the whole distro plate thing, uh, that really adds to the aesthetic. Funnily enough, there's also a lot of uh, water-cooled RAM going on. Uh, not RGB, uh, but water-cooled RAM. Now, obviously, you do not need to water-cool DDR4. We know this. It's an aesthetic thing. If you want to do it, you do it. If you don't, you don't. The way that system's been put together, it really makes the case for it. If that doesn't win you over, then it's simply not for you. And there's the card for that PC. And then we have coolant. So we've got the cryofuel solid. We know about this. We've seen this. We like it. And then we have some new cryofuel non-solid. So we're going to call it clear, even though obviously it actually has a color to it. And that is the blackest of blacky black, black, black coolant. It is absolutely opaque. And uh, EK uh, is categoric that even when it's running through the smaller diameter tubes, it is still opaque. I think that looks like beer. You might have a different view about what it looks like. But the black, that's interesting. And then we get to more RGB. EK Connect, this is their development controller. It can control six fans from memory, and there's some other bits and pieces it can do as well, including flow meter and such like. Let's move that water out of the way because it's actually part of the demo, because we use this and we can check the level. There we go, and the light comes on. You see, that, that means the reservoir, you see it's happy, and it goes up, and oh, look, the level's dropped, and now we've got a problem and that will send the signal back to the controller and it will tell it there's an issue. Uh, so that's quite neat. And we've got a demo of the software they're working on around the back here. This is the development version of EKWB's control software. Uh, so obviously RGB we know about, but in addition there's also a cooling section which is going to be for controlling your uh, PM, PWM pump uh, and also flow meter uh, and water level and such like. Uh, in other words, it's uh, an interface that's going to contr uh, control the entire system. In addition, it can also report on CPU temperature, but that's taking the info directly from the CPU sensor. That's not a uh, coolant temp reading. No doubt they will also do that as well. 
If you've seen Aqua Computers, Aqua Suite, you'll know where I'm coming from with this. That's a complicated system to use. The intention here is that this is going to be straightforward. We've also seen an awful lot, frankly, of RGB software that's a complete swine to use. And again, the intention is that this is going to be straightforward and not difficult to use. And if that uh, works, then that would be welcome. This software, incidentally, is not being developed in-house by EKWB. It's been developed in conjunction with by some people they know locally, apparently. Uh, so uh, it's been done by, you know, actual professionals. I mean, EK, after all, are engineers. They don't do software. This is a whole new avenue for them. Uh, it's, it's Frankly, it was inevitable this was going to happen. Good to see it. A second system here, built by Joe Roby. Uh, it's distribution plate. Uh, this is a uh, come around have a look. Distribution plate, that's something EKWB does not do at the moment. Monoblock, obviously they do. Uh, we know that Barrow makes distribution plates. The question is, do you make a distro plate that is specific to a case, in which case clearly the potential market is diminished, or do you make a more general, universal distro plate, in which case you'd hope the costs would be down, but then it's obviously less specific. Uh, that is the eternal question. So uh, that, interesting to see. That's, uh, frankly, it's been an obvious avenue for EKWB to uh, pursue because monoblocks, they've got those absolutely nailed distro plates. That was always the next avenue. Very glad to see that. Over here, we have Varda fans RGB. We saw those at uh, Computex. We like those. We put our finger on it. We try not to lose it. And there you can see the fan blades. And we let go. And away it goes for the whole RGB-ness. When I walked in the EKWB suite, I thought they had a few things on show. A couple of builds, bits and pieces, and the more I looked, the more I saw. Truly impressive. I like the look of that black coolant. I really like the look of those fittings. The other bits and pieces as well, the ROG Dominus uh, VRM cooler and such like. Sure, that's fun, obviously, and impressive. But uh, those fittings and perhaps that new Threadripper block. Yep, there's a lot of good stuff here. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you don't, well, okay, thumbs down if you must. Hit the bell button to tell you about new videos as they become available. I'm Leo Water for Kit Guru. This is the EKWB Suite at CES 2019.